Happy Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dirty Pat Walsh channel on YouTube with me, your host, Dirty Pat Walsh. <clears throat> Dipping on some Bob Billy. Um, first thing I want to say is uh, something really interesting that I found on YouTube uh, that a friend told me about is... Uh, there's there's some sort of landlord tenant dispute going on up the road for me. Uh, I knew there was something going on because it's just pretty crazy. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, I guess someone someone's been documenting the whole thing. And uh, cheers, everybody. Been documenting it all. I think the uh, the tenants. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I've been documenting it all. And it has, it's, it's a YouTube, it's a YouTube channel. So if you want to see crazy stuff going on on my street, like, like the street where I live, uh, check out Roxy Thor Photography. Like, R-O-X-Y-T-H-O-R photography all one word and that's a that's <laughs> I mean yeah it's pretty crazy <laughs> so but it's out there on YouTube and it's on my street so there you go um, so I, I pulled something out of the bag just now um, and now this is a Sorry, my, my roommate came downstairs. I can't remember what, what I was... I know what, what I'm going to talk about. I can't remember where I left off. But anyhow, start at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> the Silver Hearts, during the time that I was with them, uh, were on a number of uh, record labels. And uh, one of them, one, one, of the, one of the larger one, probably the largest one we were on, was... Uh, a label out of Toronto called Banbury Park Records, run by um, someone named James Greenspan, who was also our manager. Um, now, the thing, now, like records. See, see, the thing when you're a musician, if you're if you make records by yourself, you have a hundred percent creative control on what goes in. If you're on a label, you pretty much have none. You have to. Uh, do do what the label asks you to do, pretty much, right? So, this label was really into people covering other people's music. Like, um, they had a guy do a, an album of Elvis Presley hits, you know. Uh, he wanted to sign me on to do a solo album of a bunch of, like, mid mid 90s Bob Dylan songs and uh, I declined the offer cuz I'm not a fan <laughs> of that music um but uh anyhow so what so with the Silver Hearts we did a few Tom Waits covers right um that were just part of our regular set and uh now I don't mind playing a couple Tom Waits covers but I've always been compared to in the press as uh, a Tom Waits ripoff, uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's, it's. I think it's just like the lowest common denominator comparison uh, because of we both have a low growly voice. But my music is nothing like Tom Waits' music at all, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's a, it's weird, you know, to me. But it is what it is. It's been the bane of my career the entire time. <laughs> um, so, but anyhow, Banbury Park Records wanted us to do a cover of uh, Tom Waits's Rain Dogs album, like uh, like a head to toe cover of of the whole album. Um, so that's what we spent a year doing. Um, we learned. We had to learn the whole album. We had to 
uh, hire a marimba player. We had to, I had to play saxophone you know, in a couple songs. Um, and we broke up the vocals, uh, like every everybody, at least everybody in the band sang one song, and, and some most I think most people sang two songs. I don't know, but every everybody in the band sang at least one song, um, and I only sang two songs. Um, now a good a good lot of people see what the thing was is we were we were working this up to do it as a live show, uh, both in Toronto and in. Peterborough, and <clears throat> this, all the shows would be recorded, and uh, we the record label would stitch together a live album out of it, right? Um, so we did, we ended up doing the shows twice. We did them, and, and they were, I think it was a year apart. We did them. Um, this was kind of a large undertaking, <laughs> um, but yeah. So we did. We performed. We performed it twice in Toronto and twice in Peterborough, and I think it was about a year apart each. But after all that was done, um, the 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 record label put it all together, made a record out of it. I, I, as far as I know, it has the approval of Tom Waits, so that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I get bummed out about the Tom Waits reference, you know, because. I love I love Tom Waits, you know. Not all of it, you know. He's like he's a good musician, but you know I love lots of musicians a lot more than Tom Waits, you know. And uh, I don't when I'm making music, I don't have him in mind at all for what I'm trying to do, you know. So is what it is. Um, but anyhow, uh, when it came down to the the cover art of the album. Uh, you know, we actually had a, an album cover art, like we were going to mimic the, the cover art of the actual album, which is like, I guess it's Tom Waits' head cradled in the bosom of some laughing woman. Uh, it's like a black and white photograph. I don't know. It's, it's a cool cover. Um, we were going to recreate that photo with members, like a couple members of the band. And, uh, but the label wanted to do a, do up a thing that looked like a, a cartoon, um, an old dime store cartoon. And uh, so that's what we did for cover art. And I never really liked it, but it, it's not like it's cool. I like I like the style of art, but I, I don't like that we used it for the cover art. But this is the poster. This would have been a poster for Toronto. And we did it in... See, there's the silver heart. There's all kinds of little metaphor things, or whatever, little psychological dealios. June 2004, that's when we would have performed it. Um, you know, the, the streets are ninth and Hennepin. Uh, all these words are taken, like, lyrics from songs, I guess. You know, and there's, like, it's just a bunch of people on a street, but it's like a, you know, a s sailor... All downtrodden, smoking a cigarette. A guy with a hole punched in the roof of his car, and he looks kind of stern about it. Um, guys just playing guitar, looking at, looking on. <laughs> There's a guy playing piano right behind the guy playing the guitar in the saloon. Um, it's pretty random, you know. And then there's all these sad-looking weirdos over here. Um, is what it is. I don't know. It's not a not a bad drawing. There's a there's a mummy up there underneath the full moon. I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something with a it's maybe that's a lyric from a song or something. Or is that a jail guy? No, that's a guy escaping from jail and he's got a green parrot on his shoulder underneath the full moon. I'm sure that's a thing from a song or something. I don't know. Anyhow, everyone's playing music or standing around or getting sexy, you know, getting angry. I don't know. It, it shows a lot of aspects of the human condition, really, this, this uh, drawing. Um, but that's it, and it's full.
And this would have been a poster that I would have swiped from the posters before they got all marked up with Sharpie pen on the location of the show and all that jazz. So, there you go. Silver Hearts, Rain Dogs. Um, you can find a bunch of the songs on, you can't find the full album on YouTube, but you can find a bunch of the songs. Um, and I think I have a bunch of the songs in my YouTube playlist of Silver Hearts. And uh, if you ever look through my million and one playlists, then you can find, uh, can find one. <laughs> you can find the Silver Hearts one. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what's in the bag today. Um, yeah, the Tom, the Tom Waits thing, it's, you know, like I say, there's, there's a lot worse people to be compared to than Tom Waits, you know, but it's always, it's, it's like ever since I started presenting my music, uh, my, you know, where I'm singing, <clears throat> it's been referred to as like, Tom Waits, and usually in a derogatory way, you know, um, you know, like, oh, this is, this, this guy, he's trying to, especially when I was drinking a lot, you know, oh, this, this guy is trying to be Tom Waits again, or something like that, but if you listen to my records, or tapes, and CDs, um, and then you listen to a Tom Waits record, like, they're gonna sound completely different, you know, I I do I don't have him in mind at at all when I'm trying to make music. You know, he's not a, he's not an influence of mine. You know, he's a great performer. I saw him play in uh, 1999 on his Mule Variations tour. That was a pretty excellent show. Um, yeah, I like I like Tom Waits, but uh, he's not. I I wouldn't even put him. I can't, like, he's not an influence of mine, you know? There's so many other musicians that come to mind that in, uh, influence me, like Darby Crash or Howlin' Wolf or Johnny Rotten, you know? Like, way before anybody like Tom Waits. Anyway, it's it's some, been so, you know, even when uh, in the early 90s I was pulled into Trent Radio uh, to promote the release of my first cassette, uh, my first, my first, my first album, um, that was released on cassette, it was called Dog Derby, and, uh, and he was one of the people who said that I was a Tom Waits ripoff guy, right, so what he had done is when I went into the radio for this interview, um, he had a copy of my cassette, and he had a copy of a Tom Waits album, I can't remember which one, and he was going to, like, show the audience uh, how much of a Tom Waits ripoff I was by, a, a, you know, playing a little bit of one and then a little bit of the other, right? And I'm happy to say he looked like a total idiot because uh, there was no similarity at all <laughs> in the songs that we're playing. So I was pretty glad about that, uh, but but it's something like even on my uh, at midnight call the doctor album when I put it out for a review in the Electric City magazine I can't remember it's it's an arts paper from around P Peterborough um, they you know and these are people the people who write for this magazine are people who know me and have played music with me for for ages and. I think they know I don't like the Tom Waits reference, but they even they compared it to a Tom Waits record, and uh, I was kind of saddened by that. <laughs> but uh, you know, worse people. You know, I'd rather be compared to Tom Waits than Michael Bolton. You know, <laughs> so that's what it, it is. What it is. Um, but yeah, our our little stint with Banbury Park Records was. Uh, Full of, uh, full of fraught, you know, um, poor James Greenspan, you know, he, he, you know, that's the thing with the Silverhearts is like, and that's what happened with James, uh, the 
the Banbury Park Records guy who was also going to be our manager. Um, they they see this band, you know, because when we were on stage and there was a dozen of us, it was quite a magical show, you know. And so these people who, like James, who are in the music industry and think, oh, wow, what a beautiful sound, I'm going to scoop that and make, try to make something of it on my record label, um, they don't understand. Uh, they're not listening to the part of their brain that should be saying, hey, there's a dozen people in that band and they look like, they all look kind of fucked up, you know? So, and that's what happened with, you know, we were, you know, our first record label, uh, Killer Productions, uh, just dumped us because couldn't communicate and we'd been, we'd borrowed a lot of money and hadn't, that hadn't been paid back and this, that, and third, and, uh, or I shouldn't say we, I should say members of the band had borrowed money and uh, not paid it back, um, you know. Uh, so we got dumped from that. Um, we got, we were on, no, yeah, then we were on Banbury. And we just, we were just too hard to deal with, you know. We had these, Banbury Park got us amazing shows, like with, uh, you know, we played with uh, Ron Sacksmith, um, we played like backing him up as his backup band and that just went like, you know, like it was a good show. I thought it was, it was well received. I, th I thought, but, uh, Ron Sexsmith, Ron Sexsmith is a Canadian, uh, songwriter icon. You know, he's, he, uh, Paul McCartney and the Beatles is a, is a, is a fan of his and has had him over for supper and stuff like that. Um, you know, he's a big deal. And uh, so, yeah, so, you know, James set up this show with us being being his backup band uh, for whatever. And in typical Silverhearts fashion, we never rehearsed the album. You know, we never, I don't think we even sat down and listened to it together. I don't even remember hearing it once. But, uh, you know, like with everything that we did, we just kind of, plotted along and faked it and you know fake it till you make it and we were really good at doing that um and that's what we did with ron and he was he was pretty pissed off you know uh that we hadn't rehearsed his material more so it is what it is it, it was a fun show i thought it was a good show you know we had other incidences like that we had we uh Andre Etier from the, the Toronto Garage Rock Sensations in the 90s, the uh, Deadly Snakes, um, who was also a solo folk singer in his own right. Um, he did an album with us. Uh, this was the album we did after Rain Dogs. This was also put out by Banbury Park. Because um, what the original idea of having Andre in the band was us being his backup band for his songs, you know, but it turned into more of a us working together, and we actually made a really good record out of it called uh, Dear Stranger. But uh, I, I digress a lot. Um, anyhow, yeah, we, you know, we were, we were a hard band to deal with. We were a hard band to manage, you know, getting us all, it was like farming cats, you know, um, the fact that it lasted so long with so many people, and the fact that we went on so many t tours, you know, like that were pretty, you know, pretty good tours, you know, like across Canada and back and out to the East Coast a whole bunch of times, you know, like it's amazing that we held it together, you know, but uh, <clears throat> so yeah, but Bam, you know, Banbury Park was cool with us. I guess, um, we got paid for the shows, you know, uh, I don't know anything about the record, I never, never got paid anything for the record, I probably, I never, never will, it's probably, uh, a forgotten album already, you know, um, it does, it's not my favorite album we've done by any means, it, I think it actually lies kind of flat next to the original, and why wouldn't you listen to the original, you know? But it was what it was. It's a cool document, 
Um, but yeah, a bunch of people, uh, when we did the show in Toronto, or at least the first show in Toronto, uh, it was actually written in, a, in I think, Exclaim, the, the newspaper, the arts, mu arts and music newspaper. Um, a bunch of people were boycotting the show uh, that was at the Rivoli, that was where we first did the show. Um, they were boy boycotting the show because they thought that I would be aping the character of Tom Waits. That was the quote. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, while the Silverhearts did their thing behind me. Um, I don't know why people thought that. You know, I ne I've never claimed Tom Waits, you know, like I'm not, I'm not a fall, I'm not a, I'm not, I never, it's, it baffles me, people. You know, but I guess it's an easy comparison for just the fact that we have a low voice or whatever, you know, but our songwriting is completely different. Uh, you know, if I was as good as Tom Waits, I'd be rich and famous right now, you know, or at the status that he is, you know. Um, it's, it's just weird to me, you know, but like I say, could be could be compared to Michael Bolton, so it's all good. But anyhow, um, this video has been 20 minutes long, so I'm going to let you go. And uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, like it and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll be back again soon with another edition of What's in the Bag. All right, be well, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. Thanks for watching.